Hi everyone, I'm Igor Smirnov, International Grandmaster and Chess Coach. Welcome to the lesson Break the 3000s Rating Barrier. Here we will talk about Bleeds games. Well, if you're expected to achieve a 3000s rating level in long time controls, then you are a bit optimistic person. However, this is a realistic goal for online Bleeds. In this lesson, I will tell you how to achieve this level. By the way, I used to play Blitz often in the past, and my ICC rating is about 3200. Thus, I will only share practical recommendations with you, and you can be sure that they will work. Okay, the last note. The recommendations we will discuss is applicable for online and over-the-board Blitz games as well. Modern chess has a growing tendency for shorter time controls. Strong Blitz tournaments grow and they have big prizes. Moreover, Blitz games are used in tie breaks in most official tournaments. Even the World Champions title can be decided in a Blitz game. So it doesn't matter whether you like or dislike Blitz, you have to play it well. Now we're coming to the most intriguing question. How to win Blitz games? Here is the first drill. Blitz is tactics. In a Blitz game you don't have time to compose a plan to find deep positional maneuvers or to calculate variations properly. In most cases, a tactical shot decides the game. What should you do about it? First, solve 10-15 simple tactical puzzles before playing Blitz games. It's a good warm-up for your tactical vision. Please pay attention to the word simple. Ten move combinations never happen in Blitz games. You don't have enough time for such long calculation. Simple tactics is the most valuable thing in Blitz. That's why it's exactly what you should prepare for. Here is the second recommendation. Attack. An attacking side usually has much more tactical possibilities. Even an incorrect attack can often bring you good results, because it increases an opponent's chance for making a blunder. Also, it's simpler to find attacking moves than defensive ones. An attacker side moves his pieces forward and attacks something, while a defender has to solve difficult problems. Therefore, an attacker forces his opponent to spend more time. It's Black's turn now, and Black has an advantage due to his more active position. However, this advantage is not too big. Let's see what happened in the game. Black played Rook e8. It's a simple and natural move. Black is activating the Rook and is threatening Knight takes f3 discovered attack. Now White has to think. He needs to remove the Queen from the e-file and to protect the c-pawn as well. The queen of 2 move seems dangerous because of knight g4. In the game, white played queen d2. This is also wrong because of knight c4 move. By the way, knight c4 is the only attacking move for black and it's simple to find it. Queen c1, knight e4. The only thing an attacker needs to do is to move his pieces forward. Knight e4, knight c4. That's how an attacker can play quickly and effectively. And defender's task is much more difficult. Black has a lot of threats and white needs to think about all of them. White has to think and to spend time. He played knight d4. This is a blunder which allows black to win after queen b6, taking the knight and the b2 pawn. c3, knight takes b2. Now white can't play rook e1 because of knight d3 and black is winning. It's very common that the defensive side makes the blunder. An attacker usually has a lot of tactical possibilities while a defender has none. The next idea is a logical consequence of the current one. 
all sacrifices are correcting blades. A sacrifice helps you to start an attack and to create problems for your opponent. Therefore, this rule is closely connected with the previous one. When you make a sacrifice in a blitz game, then there are two possible scenarios. First, your opponent may decide to refute your idea. In this case, he will need to think for some time and to make some calculations. Even if he does find a refutation, he will appear in a time trouble. Therefore, he will make mistakes afterwards or will run out of time. Alternatively, an opponent may continue playing normally as if nothing had happened. Certainly he will not refute your sacrifice in this case. Thus it allows you to start an attack from scratch. Here white can make a simple move like g3 with an idea bishop g2. Perhaps it's the best decision. However, in a blitz game you should play more aggressively. White played queen h5, e5, bishop d3. White keeps on attacking and making provocative moves. Bishop d3 is actually not the best move. It allows black to win material after e4 and then e3. Though white can take the e3 pawn, it will give the initiative to black. We would rather prefer to attack. So white played casting. He takes f2, king h1. All the sacrifices for an attack are correct in blitz. That's why white should not worry too much about this pawn sacrifice. Knight c6, rook d3. Once again we can see a situation where an attacker's task is much simpler than a defender's one. White only needs to move forward and to attack something like queen h5, rook d3 with an idea, rook g3 for example. Black needs to think about all of white's threats and to calculate a lot of lines. For example, black need to care about rook g3, about bishop takes g7, sacrifice and other moves like this. Bishop e6 was played, rook g3, taking the g7 pawn, f6, and better was g6. Black has spent a lot of time on the previous moves. Now he starts playing quickly and it leads to serious mistakes. After f6, white played bishop d3, threatening the h7 pawn. Rook f d8. This is a fatal mistake. Of course, h6 doesn't help. White can take the pawn. g6 is also losing. White will take the pawn. Bishop takes g6. However, black has a move g5, which saves the game. In the game, black played rook d8, and there followed queen takes, king f8, queen h8, and bishop c4. So white's winning. The bottom line is always the same. You should create problems for your opponents. I've been talking a lot about it in the course How to Be Title Players, so I will not repeat it again. So far we have discussed how you should exploit tactics. Certainly it's also important not to make blunders yourself. It's a problematic aspect for most players. In a blitz game you have to make moves quickly and you can easily overlook something. What is the solution? Yes, you have no time to think thoroughly about a move. You choose a move rather intuitively. However, there is only one thing which you need to check always. You need to check attacking responses of your opponent. Let's analyze it using a concrete example. In this position, White decided to play bishop g5. What should have you done before making this move? Check the attacking responses. You should ask yourself a question. What force and moves can an opponent play on my territory? Focus your attention on your half of the board. 
Then look at the important species and think about their moves forward, which will take or attack something. In this position, after bishop g5, black can take rook takes c3, knight takes c4, or bishop takes f2. You can see that black has only a few force moves on the white territory, and you can check them very quickly. Bishop takes f2 and knight e4 are obviously bad, but rook takes c3 gives black an advantage. After rook takes c3 and knight takes e4, black will take back an exchange and will be a pawn up after all. This variation happened in the game and white resigned soon. If you follow my advice and check an opponent's attacking responses, you will never make blunders. Since it's a very important matter in a blitz game, your practical results will become much better. As you can see, blitz has some special properties. It differs from a long game. That's why your opening repertoire for blitz games should be different too. There are two main requirements for your blitz openings. First, it should be aggressive. Choose attacking gambit lines. This will allow you to play in the right style from the beginning. Secondly, it should not be well known. Opening knowledge is a very important factor in blitz. If you know an opening line while your opponent doesn't, it gives you a great advantage. In this case, you will make the first 10-20 moves quickly and will get a significant advantage in time. That's why you should not just play your usual openings in Blitz. Everyone knows them. Prepare something special, something not so common. Such an opening may not be that great objectively, however, for a Blitz game it's okay. For example, I play b3 pretty often. Of course, it's not the best move, but it's not bad also. The main thing is that it's unknown, and that's why it brings me good results. There are a lot of uncommon openings. You can try to play b6 when you're playing black. If you're white, you may use king's gambit. After e5, and you can play f4, or Santa game with the move d4. There are a lot of similar openings, and I'm sure you will find something for you. Okay, let's move forward. Here is the next recommendation. You should plan your time spending before the game. I've talked about this in the free lesson, finding the best moves quickly. You can find this lesson easily, it's on the home page of my website. Briefly, if you have 5 minutes per game, then you have about 6 seconds per move, assuming that you will need to make about 50 moves. Thus, you can calculate how much time you should spend on every move, and of course, you should follow this estimate during a game. Ok, in the end I'd like to give you some last important advice. In Blitz games, your reaction, intuition and an ability to think quickly are very important. That's why you should be in a good physical condition. In a long game, you can compensate your bad physical condition by more careful consideration. In a Blitz game, it's impossible. There is a great chance that you will make blunders if you are not on your peak form. You need to rest and sleep well today in order to be full of pep tomorrow. You need to leave your other problems aside. Only then you will be able to have good concentration and to crush down your Blitz opponents. In a Blitz game, it's really important. Ok, let's draw some conclusions. You should follow a few main rules in order to be a strong Blitz player. First, prepare special openings for Blitz. Next, be in a good physical condition. Solve 10-15 simple tactical puzzles before playing Blitz. Also, you should plan your move time spending before the game and stick to it. Next, you need to attack and make sacrifices. And the last thing, Check attacking responses of your opponent. The first three items relate to a pre-game preparation. 
Thus you need to keep only three last rules in your mind while playing. Of course it's a realistic goal and after some practice you will do it automatically. Then your Blitz rating will go up significantly and the 3000s rating will not seem so unachievable. Thanks for your attention and talk to you in the next lessons. Goodbye!